Good morning. Welcome back. I'm Misty Purcell and this is floss tube number 43. Today is Sunday, October 27th. Um, it's good to be back and I'm so happy that you're here with me this morning. Um, it's been a good month. I'm sad that October is almost over because it's my favorite month of the year. As usual, I'm prepared with coffee. I'm kind of extra caffeinated this morning. Hopefully I don't get too jittery. Hope you've been well. Hope you've been doing lots of stitching. Um, let's get right into it. Awesome. So I said that my mom was coming to visit, bringing me a hutch that I bought this summer and she came. We had the best time. And we got this hutch set up and I love it so much. So um, if you're new here, I had a display shelf in this corner for years and I've had the display shelf for probably six years or so. And I've, ever since I moved to this um, place I'm living now, I've wanted a hutch. And I've been on the search for the perfect piece of furniture and I found it this summer in Allegan, Michigan. Um, I can't remember the name of the shop, but I'll put it below in the description box. Um, it's a, it's in an old one room schoolhouse or was it a church? I don't remember. It's either an old schoolhouse or a church or it may have been both. And, uh, they redo furniture and, um, I found this this summer and it's awesome. I love it. So they had already repainted this. I did not do any of the painting. Um, and my mom brought me a few new Halloween decorations. That pumpkin, that one, that one, and then that ghost there. So that was really fun. And I've got my stitching. And there's some more stitching back there, which I'll show you in a minute. So uh, this was just last weekend that she came and we got this set up and did some other like reorganizing of my living room and I'm just so happy with how everything is set up now and I got this huge filing cabinet and it's amazing. It's weird that furniture, I guess furniture is like the toys of adults maybe because <laughs> I'm just so happy with the hutch and with the giant filing cabinet because um, I had stuff in file boxes and in two little filing cabinets and everything in those boxes and filing cabinets fits into one filing cabinet now and that's just awesome and so my living room looks more spacious, everything's organized, feels good. So I've been having a good month. Um, just had a shop update and if you want to be notified when I have shop updates you can sign up for my newsletter. I send out a newsletter about once a month and I always uh, put that sign up information below in the description box. If you ever have any trouble signing up or you'd like me to sign you up you can just send me an email. Just need your first and last name and your email address. Um, I was contacted by another stitcher who I believe is local and she wanted to let me know that, uh, more stitches in Altoona is closing, which I was aware that she was trying to sell the business. She asked if there's anything I could do. The only thing I could think of was to mention it here in case you're local that she's trying to sell the business and or closing. Um, I have not been there in a few months, but Maybe if there's a chart you've been looking for, you can go help her reduce her inventory. Or if your dream has been to own a needle workshop in Altoona, Pennsylvania, maybe you can buy that. <laughs> that would be awesome too, and I'm sure she'd be grateful. Uh, so I just want to put that out there. And Teal Elder um, informed me on my last video that I was showing a chart from... I'm going to butcher this and I apologize. I forgot again to look it up. Le Brodeau Parisien. Um, they have an Etsy shop. So I purchased this chart from the French Needle and it was, but they didn't have all of the charts from that group, that company, but they have an Etsy shop. So I will link the Etsy shop in my description below the video. Thank you, Teal, for letting me know about that. Okay, so I have some new designs that I released this week and I'm super excited. So this is the first time I've ever released multiple designs at once. And I had the next design in the bird series. So the last one was a Raven's Reply. And this is a Cardinal's Carol. And 
I wanted to, I knew I wanted to do a bird for Christmas. At first I thought it might be a dove and the dove was just not happening. And I tried some other birds and then I just had to accept that it was going to be a cardinal. <laughs> so even though I did a cardinal last year for my ornament, it was just, it had to be a cardinal. And I really love how the cardinal turned out. It's two different shades of red. There's actually three reds, uh, four reds, no three, three reds in this design. So there's um, Cupid by Classic Colorworks in the border, Turkish red because I am, I love both Cupid and Turkish red. They're two of my favorites. And then this is a DMC in the wing. I love how the bells turned out. That was a fun little detail. And so this cardinal is singing Deck the Halls. It's stitched on 40 count soft porcelain linen. And the ribbon is sizzle from lady.creates. I had some red beads that I used. I don't know where they came from, but I'll say that I prefer a bead that has a bit of iridescence, kind of a metallic look. It just seems to pop off the ribbon a little bit more than a bead that's kind of matte or clear. And uh, I had some of the ribbon in my shop, but I've sold out, so I will get more. There's a floss pack available in my Etsy shop with six of the colors that I used that were over dyed, and then there's some DMC. With all of my patterns, I include a DMC conversion in case you don't want to use the over dyed floss. There's a little bit of back stitching in this, and there are two fractional stitches in the beak. So I'm super happy with how this turned out, and I used Vana's tutorial for ruching ribbon, and I'll link that below. Thank you, Vana, for providing that awesome tutorial to us. Um, what else can I say about this? Just because I stitched something on 40 count linen does not mean that you need to stitch something on 40 count linen. Oh, here's the back in case you want to see. Um, you stitch on whatever fabric you enjoy that you are comfortable with. I dye... Even weave, I dye Ada. I dye several counts of linen, even weave Ada. So, or you can use another fabric that's in your stash or that you purchase elsewhere. It doesn't have to be 40 count. I prefer to stitch on 32 and 40 count. Those are just my two favorite counts. And so I tend to use those in my designs, mainly because of the coverage. Sometimes I prefer one over the other, depending on the size or just whatever my whim is at that time but uh, you can use whatever you like. You don't have to use the count that I used or the kind of fabric that I used. So I'm super happy with how this turned out. And I do love red at Christmas and a little bit of green. I also like gold, white. That's kind of my Christmas colors. Although I do go kind of non-traditional as well, but mostly I'd say I'm kind of a traditional color Christmas person. So that's the first design that I released. The second design is an ornament for this year. So last year I released uh, Cardinal Noel. Lots of cardinals in my designs these days and bluebirds, lots of birds. And I decided I wanted to do an ornament again this year. It's a tradition in my family to give ornaments and not usually just one. I have like a whole tree full of ornaments at this point in my life. And even if I'd only gotten one a year, I'd have a decent amount, but I've gotten more than that as a kid. But I always enjoyed that tradition and I thought it would be really fun to release an annual ornament. So my ornament for this year, should have brought Cardinal Noel to show you, but I forgot probably the next time you see the video, it'll be out on display though, because I'll have switched over to Christmas. Okay, so this is Holly Jolly. And with this one, I knew that I wanted to stitch, when I thought about what do I want to stitch, because that was what I was trying to decide for this design. What do I feel like stitching for Christmas this year? I knew I wanted to stitch a snowman, and then he had to be cute. So those were, <laughs> that was my criteria. <laughs> cute snowman. And then, um, then I just tried to say, okay, well, what else should I put in the design? And I had really enjoyed stitching a reindeer in the magic of Christmas book. And then it occurred to me like, oh, I think he needs a reindeer friend. And so he got one. Then the other elements just kind of came as I played around with the design. And the snow on the letters was sort of a happy accident. At one point I was playing around with making them striped like the candy cane. And then I realized that that didn't, it wasn't working. It was, um, 
it just didn't look right with the design. But then because I had some of the white on there, I thought, oh, what about making it look like snow? And so that was kind of a fun little twist that I added to it. So this is finished flat and it's a square. I stitched this on 32 count snow day linen. Once again, you can stitch it on any fabric that you like, any count that you like, you don't have to use what I used. And this is the back. Um, I tried some other finishing options. I consulted, it was like Needlework Galleria weekend and Barbie and Steph were at Galleria and I was texting Barbie some finishing options to see what she liked. And then they both picked what I ended up not using. <laughs> uh, it was a tough call, but I ended up going with this. But I'll show you a picture actually of what I was considering. Um, I'll try to remember to insert that one op finishing option that included holly leaves. Um, what else do I want to say about this? This is all DMC. No overdyed flosses, although you could easily pick like your favorite overdyed flosses and stitch this using that. Um, I guess that's it. You know, I use Vana's cording tutorial. So again, thank you, Vana. Vana's bow tutorial as well. And then I wanted to show you another version of this. So I stitched this twice and I stitched one reindeer darker and one reindeer lighter. Sorry, I've got some fake snow on this from when I photographed it and I didn't get it off. Okay. Oops. This was finished by Faye Rigsby and you can see the deer is darker. So in the pattern, I include an option of how you could stitch the deer darker if you want it darker, more like kind of a gingerbread color. So you can go that way as well. So that's the only difference. And then I sent this to Faye Rigsby to finish because I had just too much going on. It was a crazy time and she was very prompt and just, just did a beautiful job and I love this as a pillow and that was pretty much the only thing I just said you know could you do it as a pillow because I'm already doing one as a flat and I'd like to see how it looks as a pillow I think this would look awesome not finished as an ornament too and just as a pillow for a doble or a tiered tray I think it would be so cool so you could do it that way as well and make it a rectangle and I love this little embroidery and I love the check so many nice, nice details. And then she finished it on the back in the same fabric. I will put Faye's um, contact information on the screen so you can see. I don't want to include it in the description box just in case there are people looking around for emails to spam. So I'll put it on the video. Uh, so I'm super happy with how Faye finished this. I'm super happy with how these turned out really excited about displaying them this year and I just love them. So this was a really fun, quick little stitch. Um, this has some long stitches and that's pretty much it, just in the legs and then to the sled. So those are my two new designs. I have them in PDF format and print pattern format. They're also available through Hoffman if you're a needle workshop that would like to carry them or you can order them from me. So uh, I'd like to do a giveaway. And so you have the opportunity to win a Cardinal's Carol or Holly Jolly. And I will um, kit them up for you. So your choice of fabric type and count and um, a floss pack and a print version of the pattern for Cardinal's Carol for Holly Jolly it would be the snow day fabric in your choice of vase and count. I dye all Zweigart and the pattern. So if you're interested, in, you can enter both giveaways, but you can only win one. Um, if you're interested in being entered into the giveaway, then you can answer the question, what is your favorite bird? Okay, that's the cardinal. For Holly Jolly, uh, tell me if there's a Christmas motif that you like to stitch. So 
not that you necessarily buy every design that has this, but do you love like candy canes or houses for Christmas or snowmen? What is there something that you really get excited about for stitching Christmas? What draws you to a Christmas pattern? So let me know in the comments. That's how you can answer a question to win the one versus the other. So your favorite bird for Cardinal's Carol, your favorite Christmas motif for Holly Jolly. And the giveaway will be open. I should have looked this up. Um, we'll do like my next video. I will, I'll choose a winner right before my next video, which will probably be three to four weeks. That's very vague, I'm sorry. But when you see that my next video is up, you'll know that uh, the giveaway has closed. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop and gather up no, I have them here. No, I don't have to stop yet. I will have to stop at some point just because there's stuff everywhere, but I don't have to yet. Okay, so next, let's talk about um, an FFO. It's so good to finish things. So I finished last year, last fall, When Witches Go Riding by Prairie Schooler, but I did not fully finish it. And you may remember that I have this window in my living room and I have been planning to decorate it for the seasons and change out. So there's a piece that I want to hang from the middle of the window and then I have a branch above the window that I want to put ornaments on. So I'll show you a picture of what that looks like here. Okay, so I finally, I had the ornaments done because I stitched them years ago. They're from, I think they're from Booty U. I don't know, one of the Prairie Schooler leaflets. And then I finally FFO'd when witches go writing. Looks awesome. So this is just um, mat board. And I tried to cut it to a size where it looked right for the spacing of the fabric. It just needed to be wide enough that the stripes didn't look strange on the fabric because there's little, I don't know if you can see them, there's little lines there. Um, so I just tried to get that right. I wasn't sure exactly how wide my cording was going to be. And for a while, I couldn't even decide what cording to put here. But ultimately, I went with a thin orange cording. Then I put the grommets or eyelets in. Now, I didn't know I was going to do that until after I had glued these two pieces together. And usually when you do that, like through Vana's tutorials, if you do like a tag finish, <clears throat> she has you put a grommet in the top piece and the bottom piece and glue them together. But I wasn't quite sure that this was what I was going to do until... I'd already glued it together. So I was like, well, I just have to hope that I can make a grommet or an eyelet fit through both um, pieces. And I was able to, I mean, it doesn't look perfect on the back. You know, it's not as nice as if I had planned that in advance, but it worked. I mean, hey, and no one's gonna see the back. So I was happy that that worked out. I do have the crocodile, the big bite, and that's what I used for that. Then I just use the same cording. This is the, uh, I changed a couple colors in this. I think I changed the yellow and the orange. I think this is 3853 and I use the same color for the cording. So I just love this. Let's talk about what I have planned then for that window. So that window and I, I think we were destined to be together because, so I saw this window on Jeanette's Instagram account. And Jeanette is, I think, every little stitching thing. And the branch idea I got from Needlesmith <clears throat> in, shoot, Michigan, the West, Lakeshore, is it Muskegon? I don't know, sorry. Anyway. I'll have to look it up. That's where I got the branch idea. Anyway, the window, after I saw it on Jeanette's Instagram, I was like, I have to find that window or something like it, or I have to build that window. And I've told this story before, so I'm sorry if you've heard it, but I've been looking for it since. And then last year I was at the street of shops in Lewisburg looking at antiques and I just happened to look over and I saw the window and I was like, oh my God. And it was even a decent price. And it was just like a slightly different color than Jeanette's window. So I got it and I was so happy and I decided to do what she was doing, but just kind of modify how I was doing it and do prairie schoolers. And she was doing like, I think country cottage needleworks designs. 
and then have the branch with the ornaments. <clears throat> Since finding that window, I have found that window five, six more times. Maybe I, have, I might even be up to seven. So this last time my mom was visiting, we went to the street of shops again. They still have another one of those windows. And then I found the baby version of that window. And it's like that big. Oh my God, it's so cute. If I didn't already have one, I would get the baby version too. So I gotta insert a picture of the baby version here for you to see. So I've had so many opportunities to buy this window that it's just clear to me that we were meant to be together. <laughs> Uh, so if you ever need a window, just go antique shopping with me and I will, one will turn up for sure. So I'm, I'm planning what else I can put on the window. And this is a multi-year plan. I'm not thinking I'm going to get this done anytime soon because I've got to stitch the sampler like five times, five different samplers. And five ornaments seems to be about right for the branch. So then I've got to stitch 25 ornaments. I got five done. So, you know, it's going to be a while. So why do I say five? Because um, I've got Christmas, winter, spring, summer, Halloween. That's what I'm thinking right now. So let me show you what I've got planned. So I already stitched January and I turned that into winter. So that sampler is done and I just need to FFO it the way that I FFO'd this. So I will. Um, I don't have any of the ornaments stitched for winter. So here is what I'm thinking. For Christmas, what sampler am I going to use? I have a few candidates. And I don't know if I want to start this now or if I want to wait until, um, I don't know, next year. Like I said, this is a multi-year project. I don't have any illusions about how soon I'm going to get this done. Okay, so I could do Christmas Day, that sampler. I think this is longer and skinnier than the others. So actually, I probably won't do that now that I'm looking more closely. Yes, I think it is. So, okay, I'm not doing Christmas Day. That might really solve this problem. Maybe it's going to be this one. Because I was thinking about Good Saint Nick, but I think Good Saint Nick might also be longer and skinnier. Not that it's, you know, that big of a deal, but I want it to fit on, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll double check my measurements on my window. But I was considering Good Saint Nick or Christmas Day or December. But December is definitely about the same size as Witches Go Riding in January. So probably that's what I should do. That might have just made up my mind. So possibly to some, and look at all of that white. O, M, G. Am I going to stitch that? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's not think about that. So then for the ornament for Christmas, I'm thinking of probably doing Santas and snowmen, but maybe just doing the Santas. Now there's only four. I do think I need five. So I might have to grab a Santa from somewhere else because I might use the snowman for the winter design. Another candidate, sorry, I've got all these things kind of everywhere here. Another candidate for Christmas, but I think this might go somewhere else would be this one, but this could look really cool on the window. And I might just stitch, <clears throat> what I was thinking of doing was stitching one from this and one from Santas and Snowmen and trying to gauge which one would look better and then I can continue on. So those are possibilities. What else have I got here? Okay, so for winter then, for to go with the January one, maybe the Snowmen from Santas and Snowmen or... Possibly the winter, not Christmassy looking ones from here. So like snowman, the kid with the dog, the horse, that kind of stuff could possibly go with January. 
Okay, so that's what I'm thinking of Christmas, <clears throat> winter. For spring, I'm going to stitch June. And I won't put June on here, I'll put spring. And then I've already started the signs of spring ornaments and that will coordinate with it. So I'll just stitch, I've got two done, I'll stitch three more. That's my plan for the spring. These are evolving ideas, so don't hold me to them. Summer I'm thinking is gonna be July, changed to summer. And then for summer ornaments, Sorry, I'm kind of uh, all over here. I could do, and I think this would probably coordinate pretty well with that piece. Stars and stripes is one option. Or I think sunny days. I had thought of doing birds, like the prairie birds, but I don't think color-wise it's going to work with the July piece. So that's kind of where I'm at in terms of what I'm thinking for the window. It takes me a really long time to stitch those samplers because um, I'm always stitching other things simultaneously, like four months. <clears throat> and Barbie was trying to encourage me because we're doing this very prairie year, Sal. She was trying to encourage me to dig into another one, but I just haven't been able to bring myself to start anything big yet. I'm not quite there. So I'm gonna hold off a bit longer. But that's what I'm thinking about for that window. The other FFO I had was knitting. So this is definitely the no fiber art left behind video because I've got lots of crafts today. Um, so I showed you last time that I was working on my pop pop mittens again and I finished them. Yay! So these are um, knit a little bit large because they'll felt because I don't I didn't use super wash. Um, I think I knit the medium size. <laughs> so I just grabbed from my stash. I don't know if you can tell that the white, this one's a little bit yellower than this one. I had two different balls. I'm like, oh, they're pretty close. Old me would have been like, oh my gosh, they have to be exactly the same. And more laid back me is like, eh, no one can really tell unless I do this. So this is the pop top mitten by Cynthia Spencer. She's a friend of mine. And then I changed the top using the Adair mitten pattern. And I added this ribbing, but then I just pretty much followed the Adair mitten pattern up to the top. Um, the number of stitches that you pick up on the back to knit the pop top, I think there's a difference of like two stitches between Cynthia's pickup pattern and the mitten pattern for Adair. So I just uh, picked up the number it said and then decreased on each side to kind of close up the gaps anyway. So that's how I handled that. He could also just pick up however many um, it says on the Adair pattern and do that too. So I'm happy. I am ready. I'm not mentally ready for winter, but I am physically ready for winter. Uh, okay, so super happy with how those turned out super happy to be done and I was not allowed to start any new knitting projects until I got that and the ghost done. So now they're done and <clears throat> I'm planning to start a hat and I'd also like to start a stocking. We'll see. Okay, I had one new start which is a finish. Not an FFO but an FO. So let's talk about that. I started Barnyard Christmas. This is so fun. Um... I decided to start with a horse and I really wanted to try stitching this over one. So I did. And I've been really wanting to try, I dye uh, Linda, which is a 27 count, 100% cotton fabric. And it's touted as like an alternative to Monaco, although it's not exactly, I mean, it's not just like, oh, Zweigart's version of Monaco. It is a little bit different. I think the holes are easier to see. Um, it's not quite as, stiff. I think it feels like a 32 count Lugana in terms of the drape of the fabric, but um, the holes are easy to see. So this was my first time using Linda and I used it to stitch over one and I loved it. It was awesome. So I definitely recommend Linda in general and for over one stitching in particular. I have some Linda in my shop if you want to give it a try. So this 
I did change, so I wanted to try the anchor equivalent <clears throat> of the DMC3371 to see if the coverage was better. Coverage is pretty good. Uh, however, I don't have handy a 3371 piece over one to show you to be able to say like, oh, it's so much better or it's really not that different. Like, I don't have anything here right now, so I'll have to compare later. But this just turned out so awesome. I changed some of the colors. The colors of the horse's mane and legs. I think I changed the red. I think the green was what was called for. So basically, I looked at the pattern and to me the pattern, the horse looked a bit more yellow, but the floss colors are kind of on the green side. Now every, every time anyone stitched this, it's beautiful. So it's not like, oh, the colors aren't good, but I just kind of liked that effect that I saw on the cover. So I just decided to pull co colors of DMC that I thought looked fairly similar to the cover. And I'm so in love with it. I really enjoyed stitching. It was quite addictive. I was working on it during the 24 hours of cross stitch. I'd like to do another one. So this was my October Very Prairie Year style piece. I'd like to do one more f next month and then I'll probably come back to it next year and do some more. This is on macchiato. <clears throat> I don't have macchiato at present, but I do have soft porcelain, which is similar, just a little bit of a darker color. So I'm thrilled with this. Ah, so good. And I do use scroll rods. Sometimes I use these um, frames that kind of snap together. Vana talked about them once. I think she used them for ornaments. So um, I think they're Edmonds uh, bars and then the tacks you just put in. It does stretch out and I usually have to re-stretch it <clears throat> once. And I use this in my lap stand and that seems to work really well. If you have a clamp that kind of covers it up, you can always turn it upside down and then work the other way here if you need to. I didn't need to with this, it was so small, but that's an option. Okay. So let's talk about another new start and I have to gather that up. So let's pause. Alrighty. So one new start I have, well, the only other new start I have, um, is English paper piecing. So there's a quilt along, sew along actually. So there are other sows that aren't stitch alongs or sew alongs. There's a sew along on Instagram by a, the owner of Sunny Day Supply. It's a fabric online fabric shop. And for years, she's been making these amazing quilted Christmas stockings and blogging about them and then eventually on Instagram posting them. And it just kills me every year. The sew along has been going on for a few years now, I think. I've always wanted to participate and every year it kills me that I don't. So finally, I was like, seize the day, <laughs> make the time. So I haven't tried to do English paper piecing in a pretty long time. I tried once years ago with these really tiny hexagons that I printed out myself and cut out. And I was trying to make little flowers. Anyway, it didn't go well. I just wasn't that into it. But I thought I would try it again. Now that you, you know, I mean, I'm sure you could buy paper pieces back then, but what sizes, I don't know. Now there's a glue stick method for basting that I don't remember existing, you know, whatever, 10 years ago when I tried this. So there's all kinds of innovations and I decided that I would give it a go. So I ordered some paper hexagons from paperpieces.com. I got the one and a quarter inch size. I was debating how big to get my hexagons because you can get all different sizes and one and a quarter inch is like one side. It's not the dimension like farthest across. That would be two and a half inches, but um, this is the template. So I bought the template so that I could cut it out, like fussy cut it with my rotary cutter. So I have a rotating cutting mat and a small Ulfa rotary blade. And then I place the template here. You can see the line. This is where the actual size of the piece is. And then I got a three eighths inch seam allowance. I wasn't sure whether to go with quarter or three eighths. They give both of these as options. I just figured having a little bit bigger template to hold on to while I was cutting might make my life easier. So I went with the three eighths inch seam allowance. And then I put the little grips 
These are true grips that I added to the back just so it doesn't slide around on me. And the last couple days I cut out all my fabrics for one set of the stocking. I think I'm going to need a couple more on the edge. And then I started piecing. None of these are the cute pieces of Christmas yet because I'm just at the top. <clears throat> but here's my hexagon so far. So I'm leaving. I'm trying to not put too many cute fabrics up here because I may want to put a cuff across the top. I haven't decided yet. Um, so just in case, I didn't want to cover up like anything really that I was super in love with. Uh, but I'm working my way down. I'm using the flat back piecing method, which is where you lay the pieces next to each other flat and then you kind of whip stitch them together across the back. Oops, and I glue based. I did a couple that were thread basting just to try it out again and that was fine, but I figured as much time as I'm going to spend stitching this up and then hand quilting it probably with the pearl cotton. It's fine if I use a glue stick. So I did. I'm using the Sewline glue stick that a lot of people use. And it's coming along. So this has been fun. I've been working on this since yesterday. Just nice to do a little bit of quilting again. Pretty, I mean, well, relatively quick, I guess, project. It's going to be a fairly large stocking. I didn't want to take the template off to show you <clears throat> because it's underneath the pieces right now. And the pieces are kind of where I want them. But the template is like huge. It's like four pages and you tape them together. But that's about a good size for the size of the hexagons that I bought. Um, really enjoying it. It's been fun to do that. Fun to get back to quilting. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about it, I will, I'll link to the paper pieces um, page with the hexagons. I'll link to the tutorial for the flat back stitch. The thing that's nice about that is that you cannot see the stitching at all on the front. And that was one thing I actually didn't like about my hexagons before was that you could see it on the front. And I think I was sewing them face to face, right sides together and whip stitching. Um, so I like this technique. <clears throat> and I learned about it when I was thinking of doing a passacaglia quilt, which I think I've decided I will never do. <laughs> one of the purposes also of this is just to see, do I like English paper piecing enough to do a bigger project than this? Because I've been wanting to do this ice cream soda quilt for years since, I don't know, maybe three years ago, three or four years ago. I'm contemplating investing in the templates, but I just, I, I'm concerned. It's got to be like something, I don't care if it takes me like a while to make it. <clears throat> it's just, I can't lose like so much momentum that I stop in the middle of it and don't continue. That's my fear. So that's why I haven't taken the plunge yet. I'll see how this goes and then I will think about it. But I'm enjoying this so far. I'd like to piece both sides of the stocking, but um, I need to, I guess, see how long one side takes me. And then I'll decide if I'm going to piece both sides. I, I do plan to line it. <clears throat> I might put some pom-poms um, hanging from it. So you really, if you're on Instagram, you've got to check out the hashtag. It is sunny stocking sal. Eye candy. <laughs> so much eye candy. You really got to go look at it. Oh, they're so awesome. So, yeah, I've been addicted to that hashtag every year when they do the. Right now is the sew along. It started, I think it goes like October 3rd to November 3rd. So, I have a sewing day coming up with a friend, and I'm thinking of doing another one that's pieced by machine. I saw someone used um, tumblers. So, I got the Marty Michelle tumbler template that's like the multi size, and I think I'm going to do the smallest size and piece another stocking. There's two different sizes of stocking. Here's the half pint, and then I'm doing the larger one right now, but I might do the half pint for the tumblers. I'll have to see scale-wise how it looks on here. Um, this size worked pretty well with the fabric that I have in terms of I have some really cute Christmas fabrics and the motifs fit pretty well in this size. I don't know how they'll work with the tumbler. I'll have to see. But so that's been fun. So other plans, other than working on my prairie schooler thing, all the other things I've mentioned, another plan that I have is to stitch Christmas rolls. <clears throat> so Heather had sent, asked me about swapping Halloween rolls for Christmas rolls. And she said, you know, she was done stitching Christmas rolls and would, she, would I be interested in swapping so that I could get Halloween rolls? And I was like, yeah, but I don't want to start it. Well, I'm going to try to start Christmas rolls so that I can send it to her. So this is what, if you haven't seen it, it's by Lizzie Kate. This is what it looks like. And I am thinking of stitching it 
I could do this on 40 count, but I like the size here. I don't know if it's 28 or 32. I like it a little bit bigger. So I think I'm gonna do it on mint green, 32 count. I looked at the original floss colors and I also looked at Priscilla's conversion and I think on my fabric, Priscilla's conversion shows up better. I may change one or two colors, I don't know yet. But the blue definitely shows up better that she had chosen for hers. So um, my question for you is that I would not stitch this in hand, I would stitch it on a scroll rod. When I stitch on a scroll rod, I notice that if I do 32 count, I'm using two strands of floss quite a bit of bulk builds up on the rod as you're scrolling across the project and with this being such a long project there would be a lot of bulk I have not had something that was so bulk or so long that it was really an issue but I'm concerned and it doesn't happen with the 40 count but it happens with the 32 because of the two strands so if you do use scroll rods and you're using two strands of floss how do you deal with the fact that in the middle it's bumping up because of your stitching and then on the sides it's not are you putting something in the sides um, to kind of bump them up? And do you have issues with your fabric stretching because of the stitching in the middle? That's kind of my concern. So let me know what you do to deal with that. Um, okay, that was my question about that. Let's talk about some whips. I, I thought... So I did the 24 hours of cross stitch. I thought I was gonna rotate all my whips and then I just like suddenly went into finishing and monogamous stitching. So <clears throat> I finished the Witches Go Writing and I finished, or um, and I just stitched a couple of projects. I don't seem to be in the mood to rotate all my whips right now. And so I decided not to fight that and just go with it. Um, I did a little bit, I'm pretty sure this is since you last saw it, but not, I could be wrong. <clears throat> just a little bit on my um, sampler lesson four by Plum Street. I'm stitching this on 40 count macchiato. Try to cover up the chart there. Eh, okay, never mind. We'll just hold it. So I just worked a little bit on the house and finished the lettering. I don't remember where it quite was the last time you saw it. <clears throat> I haven't worked on it in a while. I do really like it. Just like I said, I've been monogamous and the thing I've been working on, I've had two things. So I've been working on Raven's Hollow, especially once my, I was waiting on hickory sticks. And once that came in, then I was kind of back at this. So here is where it's at. This is on 40 count whisper. And last time I think I said I was done stitching the dress and I wasn't. And so I thought I was done. I started stitching the feet and then I was like, this is off. And then I realized I still had like three or four more rows of dress to go under the apron. I had to rip it out. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm moving along on this pretty well. Don't think it'll be done before Halloween. I think I'll finish it this year. I think I'm going to, I'm not 100% certain but I think I'm gonna take the bottom off and maybe stitch it like from there up. Like that. I'm I'm gonna stitch that much and then I'll see if it looks right. And if it looks weird, I'll stitch more, but that's, that's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> so that is going along well. And then I have one other whip that I've been working on a lot and that I've been working on the most. And that is Tis the Season. I am back at it with renewed determination. So, let me find the picture in case you don't know what I'm talking about. This was one of my must stitch pieces for a long time. Glad I'm finally back to working on it and really enjoying it. It's coming along well. <clears throat> I wish I could count. I don't know what it is about this piece. It's nothing wrong with the design. There's no problem with the floss or the fabric. There's just something wrong with my brain. <laughs> it's not happening with any other piece. It's just this one. I keep screwing up and starting things in the wrong place. <clears throat> the leaves, the vines, I don't know what my deal is. 
the snowflakes. Anything I can screw up, I'm, I'm doing a good job. But you can see I've made a lot of progress since last time. And I'm just loving this. I had some moments of being like, oh, you gotta hurry up and get this done. And I was like, no, you've got to enjoy the process. That's why you're doing this. Stop it. So <laughs> trying to calm myself down and enjoy it because I don't plan to stitch it twice. It's just happening once. But this is one of my favorite things that I've stitched. It's just, it's beautiful. The design is, I'm loving the, the silks. I did change some of the colors. And I get questions about that pretty often. So I will tell you <clears throat> what I'm using. Oops. Okay. This is my messy floss ring. So uh, for the gold, I'm using whiskey from Weeks. Some of these are the called for and some of them are not. And I didn't look to see. I think Attic Tea was called for. From This is a Belsoir. Um... Classic color works, or no, sorry, Gentle Art, Green with Envy. That's another leaf color. <clears throat> Mud Pie is the branch. Belsois again. Vanilla Pudding is the white from Belsois. Moss is the gray on the cardinal. And then Tulip is the red, which is not called for. And I love this red so much. It's in my favorite reds category. For the orange, I was using the um, Victorian Motto orange from the floss pack that she had released. So that's what I'm using. And I'm just so enjoying it. So I'll keep working on it. I think I'll finish it this year. I'm still undecided about what lettering I want to put across the bottom. Um, I might just go with the French. I tried looking up some winter sayings and I had some that I liked, but I think they're too long. So I'm gonna keep mulling that. Okay, so that was, I'm stitching this on 40 count. So this color, I know a lot of people are looking for this color of fabric that I dyed. I've been working on coming up with an approximation. I'm gonna show you a little bit of that. So I think the closest color is going to be this one. And I wasn't going to release it because I was worried that it looked a little bit too much like mint green. It's similar to mint green, but I don't think it's the same. So I think I'm okay. But in this light, you aren't going to be able to tell probably. This is more of a gold tone and this has more of a blue tone. But you can see that they're not significantly different, which is what made me hesitate. But of all the colors I came up with, this is the best match. So I think I will probably release this. I haven't decided on a name for it yet, but you'll just have to be aware that it's, it's not mint green, but it is, it's, you know, they're the same colors mixed differently. So there's going to be a similarity to that. Um, I also came up with a more blue version. I love this. You can start, you can see a little bit of that gold on top of it. Oh, it's kind of antique -y. Love this. So this would also be one that you could use for this design. I think your snowflakes would pop a bit more than on that one. And lastly, I came up with this because I wanted to see what would happen. I told you in the, recently I was going to try to go blue, green, and yellow, green. So this is my yellow, green. And again, I've got this gold kind of overtone to the yellow, green. And I love it. All three of them are awesome. So I'm going to be working on those. Hopefully, I'm not sure how I'm going to release them. I don't know if I'm going to try to release them a couple at a time. I have to figure that out. Sorry, I wish I could have more information for you. It's just been really busy getting this update ready with the new designs. And I was trying to test these simultaneously, but I could only get so far. <clears throat> so I'm putting it out there that we're getting there. I need to start testing the other bases, see how much time I have this month. I would say that, it, um, you know, at least in the December update, one of these will be in, but maybe, maybe in the November update, watch for the newsletter. <laughs> and then when my video comes out, I'll tell you what I've got. I don't think I can release all three of them at once. I don't think I have enough time to do that in November. 
but if I could do at least one or two, and then maybe in the next in, uh, in the next update the other one or two, that's what I'll shoot for. Sorry, be vague. Um. Okay, so. I guess that's it on those things. I wanted to shout out Jenny. She is a friend of mine through Instagram. She's a calculated stitcher. She just started a floss tube channel recently. And she didn't tell me that she started a floss tube channel. I found out through Laura um, that she had one. So I happened to catch that and then I was like, oh, I have to watch Jenny's channel. So Jenny is a quilter and a stitcher um, we met actually, she lives in Texas, but we met at a quilting class in Pennsylvania. So she talks about how we, I, I mentioned it, I think a while ago, maybe in a video, she explains how we met. It's like a small world. She is so sweet. Um, so I hope you'll check her out and say hello. I will link her channel below. Um, just please stop by and say hi to her. Check out her beautiful projects. She is a brave lady who just jumps in and try stuff. So I admire that about her. She's um, a math teacher. I admire that. Um, so she's just awesome. So please say hello to her. Uh, next. I mentioned that I did a swap in my last video <clears throat> with Barbie and Helen. So I'm going to show you what I received. I already showed you what I sent pictures of them. Now I my mom came to visit and I had to put things away. So I don't have like the entire package of what was sent to me. I'm just gonna show you the small and then I'll insert a picture of what was sent. So Barbie made this piece. This is a Prairie Schooler piece. She's got it as an ornament finish with the Rick Rack. I do just love polka dotted fabric so much. So this is awesome. I love this. And I've got it in my tiered tray Put it back in there and then helen's is on it's now on my hutch and this is a heart and hand design and helen finished it with this felted wool flower on the top it looks awesome so helen made one of these for barbie and one of these for me. She didn't get around to making one for herself. So maybe next year Helen gets to have one. So those were awesome. I'm so glad. Oh, look at the beads too. I'm so glad we did the swap. We're talking about doing one for next year. I just begged that it be a like no deadline swap because things are so crazy for me um, that having another deadline is kind of stressful. So vote for a non-deadline swap of we just send something whenever <laughs> that would work best so that was really fun um we just we organized that informally just for fun you know between friends but there are swap groups you can join um on facebook or like groups that do swaps like if you're a fan of a certain designer sometimes those groups will do a swap so you could look at doing that or just you know, gather up some friends and talk about doing a swap with them. That would be fun too. So I um, have some haul. Just a second. Okay, so um, one thing's already put away. Two things actually are pretty put away. So I'll just show you one thing that I got that I was really happy to get. <clears throat> this beauty. So, so pretty. I got this on eBay. Uh, I also got some roll of frame scroll rods to try. Uh, I saw that Salty Yarns had posted on their Instagram account that they'd gotten some in and I've been wanting to try them for a while. So I called and placed an order and I can't wait to use them. So they're here. I just haven't started a new project to try them yet, but I should be pretty soon. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to using them. Although now I'm like way behind whatever Vana does. I'm like three years behind because now she's on to like Hardwick Manor hoops and a fanny frame and so I'm I'm light years behind Vana but uh I'm excited about the roller frame to try out so 
I got some cards, some stitchy kindness. Thanks so much for sending me cards because I love Halloween and I appreciate, I got one from Betty. Isn't that awesome? Got one from Melanie. She knows I like peanuts. And I got one from Jen. So thank you so much, all of you, for these cards. I love them. And Halloween's an unappreciated hol hol uh, holiday, in my opinion. Um, anything else there? I guess not. I'll show you a few things in my shop. I've gotten some really cute Just Another Button Company pins. As a knitter, I am especially fond of this one with the mitten. I'm not ready for snow, but I do like this. <laughs> it will be here regardless of how prepared I am. Uh, I got some charts in. Been getting some of the berries, the Erica Michaels berries in. Ah, so cute. And I really love this. So I had to get that for the shop as well. Another berry. Now we're moving on to Christmas. So that was fall. Fall and Halloween. So you can finish this as a berry or a pillow. Love them both. Had to get, I, th I can't remember if I've had this before in my shop, but Jenny Bean's Christmas just needed to happen. So, so cute. I've liked that for a really long time. Coverlet Christmas. I had this for my stash. I had to get it for you. I love this. So this is like inspired by weaving motifs. Those trees and this across the bottom um, are like weaving. I'm trying to think of what this is called. <laughs> you can tell I haven't woven in a year, right? Sadly, but hey, I can't complain because I'm doing stuff that I love. I also got in this beauty. Got a couple of Nan's designs. And this I noticed on the back said it was stitched by Cindy. That's pretty cool, Cindy, if you're watching. Beautiful. The um, trees are, let's see, are they felt or wool? Wool. Beautiful. I really, really like that. So those are a couple, a few, several, many <laughs> new things in my shop. Um, I guess that's it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for all of your nice comments. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Thank you to all of you who reached out to me when I released my new designs to send me a nice note. I really appreciate that. I so enjoy hearing from you and uh, I'm so grateful for this community. So I really appreciate it that you take the time to um, give me encouragement and uh, just let me know how you're doing. Um, so it's just, it's just really good to be in community with you. I will see you in three weeks, a month, something like that. I'll see you again soon. The time will fly. Semester will be nearly over by then. All right. Have a good one. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.